For one violent, chaotic night this summer, Turks defied tanks to defeat a coup attempt. At least 250 people died. But democracy was saved. The country rejoiced. Now, though, the hunt for the conspirators has cost more than 100,000 people their jobs. Toplumsal alanın her noktasına derinlemesine sirayet etmiş bir terör örgütüyle karşı karşıyayız. The government says it's cleansing Turkey of a virus. But is it also creating a state of fear? They are trying to eradicate all opposition. What's the real purpose of Turkey's cleansing? And has it gone too far? Monday morning at a school on the far fringes of Istanbul. Pupils throughout Turkey are singing the national anthem at this moment. But here, there's something odd. Biology laboratory. This is a huge school Music with very few kids. Most of the classrooms are empty. Kimya laboratories. Uh -huh. The school's not new, it's just changed management. What was a private institution has been taken over by the state. And it's starting afresh with only the younger stage group. Like all the staff, the headmaster's new too. So this is the plaque that's been put here to commemorate the defeat of the coup, basically. And the school's got a new identity. It's been renamed after Munir Al Khan, a policeman killed by pro coup soldiers on the night of July the 15th, when senior military officers tried to overthrow Turkey's elected government. İlk şehitlerden bir tanesi Boğaziçi Köprüsü üzerinde kalkışmanın olduğu ilk saatlerde, ilk anlarda bu arkadaşımız şehit oluyor. Eşi ve küçük bir kızı var. Bu isimlerin verilişi de daha çok bu özel okullardan bu kapsamda dönüştürülen okulların tamamına şehit ismi verildi. More than 900 formerly private schools like this have been taken over by the state. We've been shown this school as a shining example of the new post-coup Turkey, moving forward confidently now that the threat to democracy has been removed. But of course, this place was built by people now considered enemies of the state. By people whose leader, Fethullah Gulen, is regarded by today's pupils as a terrorist. I'm Turkish and I will be forever, but I think uh, he isn't. Mm -hmm. He's, he's always, yes, he's always doing uh, something bad for Turkish people mm. yeah. because of I hate him. Fethullah Gulen is a 75-year-old Islamic preacher living in self-imposed exile in the United States. He says his aim is simply to promote moderate Islam and education. But the graduates of his many schools formed a powerful old boys' network, what some now call a parallel state. Gulen condemned the coup. He denies any link to it. But President Erdogan, a former ally of the preacher, claims Gulen actually masterminded the conspiracy. Now, the Ministry of Education in Ankara, where many Gulenists worked, is leading the state's efforts to cleanse Turkey of what it calls his virus. Eğitim sektörü, bu paralel yapının uzun vadeli planının başlangıç noktası. Yani bundan yaklaşık 40 yıl kadar önce çocukları velilerden alıyorlar. Kendi kariyer planlamasına göre çocukları üniversitelere yönlendiriyorlar ve meslek seçtiriyorlar. Çocukları daha küçük yaşlarda alıyorlar. Aldıktan sonra tırnak içinde beyinlerini yıkayıp apayrı bir insan figürü, apayrı bir figür haline getirip tamamen kendilerine hizmet eden, sorgulamadan, itaat eden, 
bu terörist yapıya hizmet eden bireyler haline dönüştürdüklerini gördük. Now those alleged infiltrators are being purged on a massive scale. 50,000 were sacked in just one decree published online. On the list are teachers and academics like this history lecturer in Eastern Turkey and people from every walk of life. So it's profession after profession basically, so many areas of public life. Yeah. Secretaries, typists, inspectors, nurses, doctors, midwife, cook. Cook. The list just goes on and on and on. Yes. This is extraordinary. And then at 2253, Uh, you see my name, Tuncel University, Candan Badem, Associate Professor, Department of History. Now he's an ex-associate professor and his life's fallen apart. Under investigation for links to Gulen, he can't travel abroad, access his own bank account or get any other academic job. And what's the evidence against him? A book he owned by Fatula Gulen. A few days before, a friend of mine had seen that book in my office and told me, oh, remove this book. Nowadays it's dangerous. I told him, but it's ridiculous. I'm an academic. To make it even more ridiculous, he says, he was using quotations from the book to tweet against Gulen. You can just search my name and Fethullah Gulen on Twitter and you see those tweets. They are from uh, two years ago. Jandan thinks Gulen is a dangerous extremist. I have I underlined his words. Uh, apostasy in Islam is punishable by death. He defends it. So they accused you of being a Gulenist simply on the strength of finding one book by him in your university office? Yes, I mean that's the only evidence they can talk of. Jandan's a socialist and atheist, against everything Gulen stands for. But he's also against Turkey's Islamist government. He's a troublemaker who opposes the military campaign against Kurdish rebels and has tried to sue both President Erdogan and his own university bosses. I'll buy this one. Jandan thinks that's the real reason he's been sacked. But he's very much at home in this left-wing town, Tunjuli which the state has always found troublesome, though its people certainly aren't Gulenists. It's hard to imagine anywhere in Turkey less likely to have been involved in the coup than this town, Tunjuli, the only place in the country where the Gulenist movement failed to establish any kind of organization. It's a town with a strong secular tradition where a religious brotherhood could never have taken root. And yet, since the coup, all these local teachers and more have been suspended from their jobs for allegedly supporting terror. They're all members of a left-wing, pro-Kurdish teachers' union. They vowed to go on protesting till they're reinstated. And their kids are backing them all the way. It's a real mark of the rebellious spirit of this town that the daily protests here has now been going on for several weeks and it's attended not just by suspended teachers but also by parents and students. There's a long tradition of solidarity here and of respect for teachers. This region gets some of the best exam results in Turkey. Gitmem dedi öğretmenim olmazsa başka öğretmen istemiyorum. Niye dedim niye istemiyorsun? Ben öğretmeni çok seviyorum. Ondan başkası başka öğretmen istemiyorum dedim.
The total number of Turks sacked in the post-coup cleansing has now reached at least 105,000, including police, soldiers and judges, and nearly 35,000 have been arrested. Some may well be guilty, but it's hard to believe that so many people, or even a fraction of that number, can have known about a conspiracy which had to be as secret as possible. Thousands who protest that they, or relatives, are innocent, have sought advice here, at the Ankara headquarters of Turkey's main opposition party, the CHP. This nurse, married to an Air Force technician, can't get over the humiliation of his arrest as a suspected Gulenist. She says there's no evidence against her husband. She doesn't want to give his name. But the family are now shunned. <laughs> Eşimin dostları, arkadaşları, komutanları, hiç kimse arayıp da bir e, geçmiş olsun ne yapıyorsunuz eşiniz yok. Hala da aramıyorlar zaten. Yani görüşmek istemiyorlar bizimle. Virüs, evet. Virüslüymüşüz gibi bizi <gülüyor> tecrit ettiler yani. Many seeking legal advice here don't even know who's accused them. E, burada en büyük bu kadar mağduriyetin yaşanmasının sebebi ihbar mekanizmasının çalıştırılması. Ama bu ihbarda da e, isimsiz, sadece örnek veriyorum ben bir arkadaşım bana e, yükselmem anlamında engel olması, bir ticari faaliyet bulunan rakibimin e, ihbar edebiliyorum. Ama burada sıkıntı söz konusu suç vatanı ihanet. Şu anda insanlar açığa alındığında toplumda acaba sen de mi vatan aynısın gibi bir bakış var. E, bu kişiyi siz yarın öbür gün görevine geri gönderdiğinizde bu yaşadığı sürecin psikolojik yönü de var aynı zamanda. I've met so many people here whose world has suddenly collapsed, who've lost their livelihoods, their jobs, and who've even become social outcasts because of accusations, usually anonymous accusations, that they were in some way involved in the coup. One woman even told me that her children's friends weren't allowed to come round and play anymore. But most of these people are very, very reluctant to be interviewed because they think that will make it even harder for them to get justice. This woman, Hilal, is a brave exception. In a flat in Istanbul, she's packing clothes to take to her brother, a military officer arrested after the coup attempt. He's in jail and, like others arrested, will be tried in due course. But she doesn't think the process will be fair and she's daring to publicize his case. Gözaltı süresinden sonra ilk hakim karşısına gittiğinde hakimin zaten açıklaması şu anda herhangi bir delil yok. Benim abimin dışında birçok insan var. İfadesi alınmadan ihraç edilmiş meslekten. To seek justice for them, she's come to Ankara to launch a public campaign, the State of Emergency Victims Solidarity Platform. Doğuda vatanını savunan, terörle mücadele eden askerden daha çok vatanını seven kim olabilir? Ve bizler tek isteğimiz alnımızı açılan gerçekten bu vatan haini kara lekesini silmek istiyoruz. Some people, she says, have been sacked just because their child went to a Gulen school, or just because they kept money in a Gulen bank, or even just because they scored a high exam mark in the year when some Gulenists are said to have cheated. The sense of injustice is too much for some to bear. We want a normal government. We don't want to cry. We Bu kadar göz yaşını taşıyamayacak bir ülke gerçekten taşıyamayacak. But the events not well attended. The mainstream media don't cover it at all. More and more they repeat the government line, and that means talking about enemies, not victims. Every day you open the paper here and there's more stories about the conspiracy behind the coup and more lists of people dismissed or arrested. So 
just in this one, going down the list, there's 60 people taken into custody in Antalya, nine employees of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs arrested in Ankara, 13 people taken into custody in Konya, that's in the middle of the country, and the list goes on and on, and there'll be more tomorrow and the day after. Even far out in the countryside, hundreds of miles from Ankara or Istanbul, the hunt for Gulenists is taking its toll, leaving crops to shrivel in the fields. Ismail Kaya is a cucumber farmer. But the canning firm that bought all his produce was taken over by the state. Because it's said to have belonged to Gulenists and for months the new trustee didn't make any payments. Tamam doğru darbe o yapmış. Bu kötü bir şey. Biz taht şey yapmıyoruz yani tasdik etmiyoruz. Darbe yaptı da aman iyi oldu demiyoruz. Ama e, ben darbeden niye mağdur olayım ki? Ha, devlet yap e, birisi yapmış bizim İstanbul bize 300 kilometre belki de. İstanbul'da olan bir şey bu. E, bizim buralarda öyle hiçbir şey olmadı. Yok. Hani ne darbe gibi herhangi bir yer bir şey olmadı. Ha olmuştur. Devletle olan bir sorunu varsa o yapsın. Biz niye mağdur olalım? Up in the village, everyone has the same complaint. The whole district depended on that single canning firm. Part payment for an earlier crop has now been made, but they've had to tighten their belts. Şimdi tabii ki darbeden sonra hayat zorlaşmaz mı? Şu anda köy perişan. Yani şimdi dün arkadaşımızın, Cancıyar arkadaşımızın göçü verdi. Arkasından gidecek daha burada bir iki tane çok aile var. And you can find places all over Turkey suffering like this. Hundreds of alleged Gulenist firms employing hundreds of thousands of people have been taken over by the state. Back at the Ministry of Education in Ankara, civil servants are anxious too. No one knows who may be dismissed next. Teachers or others who say they've been wrongly accused can now apply to special government complaint centers. But the state doesn't expect that many people will be reinstated, certainly not the 28,000 state school teachers who were purged in the first wave of dismissals. Kesinlikle bu 28,000 kişinin tamamının Fethullah Gülen'in yani terörist başının çağrıda bulunduğu bu yapıları destekleyin dediği sivil ve ekonomik yapılarla üyelik, ekonomik ilişki, eylemlerine katılma anlamında somut pozitif hukukun verilerine göre e, elimizde belgeler var. Mesela evini satıp, arabasını satıp götürüp bu yapının ekonomik kaynaklarına transfer etmiş. There's no such evidence against Jandan, the history lecturer, but he doesn't think that he'll get his job back anytime soon. Nowadays, everyone is afraid of one day becoming a Gulenist because it's so easy. You don't need evidence, and those processes may take years. Fighting for reinstatement gets ever harder as new state of emergency measures restrict the work of defense lawyers and shut down ever more independent media, particularly in Kurdish areas. Democracy is uh, suffering, you know. They are uh, closing down TV channels. They are trying to eradicate all opposition, uh, trying to uh, remove all oppositional people from the state, from universities, from media. But the state still says that the purge is meant to safeguard democracy, primarily against Gulenists. Biz 15 Temmuz sürecinde e, toplumsal alanın her noktasına derinlemesine sirayet etmiş ve çok farklı noktalardan destek alan bir terör örgütüyle karşı karşıyayız. Bu terör örgütünü güçlendiren sivil toplum yapıları var, sivil yapılar var e, ve bu terör örgütü bunun sayesinde hem ekonomik olarak ayakta durabiliyor, hem bu terörist faaliyetlerini finanse edebiliyor, hem de buralara insan kaynağı yetiştirebiliyor. Dolayısıyla bir kere şu tespiti yapmamız lazım. 
bu kalkışmaya destek olan bütün yapılar ve bu yapıların içerisindeki bütün figürler terörün destekçisidir. Isn't there a real atmosphere of fear now in the country? People looking over their shoulder all the time saying am I about to be denounced simply in order to settle some personal score? Bu yapıyla ilişkisi olmayan, yapıyla e, bağlantıya geçmeyen hiç kimsenin korktuğu bir süreç değil, tam tersine desteklediği bir süreç. E, yapıyı deşifre etmek için destek olunan bir süreç yaşıyoruz. E, öyle e, insanların korktuğu, endişelendiği e, bir süreç yok. Tam tersine mutlu oldukları bir süreç var. <gülüyor> Most Turks still haven't got over the massive shock of July the 15th. They thought military uprisings belonged to history. But this one came frighteningly close to succeeding. This is just one reminder of how many ordinary people paid with their lives to defeat the coup. And many Turks think it's their sacrifice, their heroism, that the world should be remembering and not making too much fuss about people who may have been wrongfully accused in the course of the subsequent investigation. The public mood is so hostile to alleged traitors that Hilal, the sister of the arrested officer, doesn't want to reveal his name or show his picture but she's determined to go on campaigning to exonerate him and others. Ne gerekiyorsa, her ne yapmam gerekiyorsa yapmaya hazırım. Çünkü biz bu vatanı seviyoruz. Biz asla vatan hain değiliz ve bu bizim alnımıza çalınan kara bir leke. Biz bu lekeyi temizleyeceğiz. Biz birçok insandan çok daha fazla vatan severiz. It's likely to be a long struggle. And the signs are, it'll get ever lonelier.